Hi, Carol here, and I am into a Christmas card here, and I'm turned on the camera, and welcome to my craft room. This would be more than a one-part card, for sure, with all the little details I have been putting into it. So I am just going to take it from here and show you what I've done. I have taken a five and a half by six card stock, and I will show you here what I'm using. It is the Gina K, the one I used on a couple of cards back. It is this Pure Luxury cardstock from Gina K. I hope I have it in the camera, but anyway, that's what I used. And um, I am using the Strathmore watercolor paper right here that you get at Michael's when they go on sale. And um, let me dig in here. And then I am using Stampin' Up's Lovely as a Tree. I'm going to use the bottom trees and this one beautiful fern tree. And then the gorgeous papers. I am still using this line. I have got to find some more of these farmhouse uh, 8x8 pads. Are they 8x8? I think so. Well, that would be easy. 6x6 six six pads. Sorry, 6x6. Six six. Anyway, I'm using them for my next card I'm going to show you. I'm going to be using the Sizzix uh, adhesive sheets on the next card. It's going to be a real simple card, yet elegant. And what I did on this card, this was done on purpose. I took a piece, a um, quarter of an inch in, I cut it out of that paper pack, and I cut out the center. I just stuck a, this is from Stampin' Up! Square dies and I just stuck it on there. It didn't matter to me as long as I had a little bit of space to cover the watercolor paper. Why waste that whole sheet of the inside when you're going to cover it anyway? And I used my Whiff of Joy church stamp. That is going to be my focal image and that is this one right here. Isn't that gorgeous? Just gorgeous. So I am using that stamp and then um, this is what I did with the paper extra on the inside. I took uh, just scraps. I wanted to use just leftover scraps that I had in there from my last card. So I, to write on here, I took the Strathmore watercolor base. I did the Lovely as a Tree. I uh, used the um, Ursamark stamped it and then I put the Martha Stewart gold and heat set it on there. Hopefully you can see this. Let me just see here. These are from the dollar store. You get uh, the photo corners. I have these ones. They're two for a dollar and then I have the black one or the gold ones that I used right here. I have set them aside but I'm not going to go looking for it right now because I want to get on and do this card because I am watercoloring. I put those gold on the corner right there as you can see and I used some scraps in the background. Then I used my new Singer sewing machine with the green thread in it because I haven't got any white yet and I did this beautiful fancy stitch. I don't know what it is but I just pressed it and that came out. It's gorgeous and I sewed the green down on this sheet and then I used a scrap back drop onto a full sheet here that I cut down for the background. And I'm going to show you how I am going to gold this up so it matches the tree here at the end. Okay, so right now we are working on the image. And this, uh, the other day I stopped in at our secondhand store and I had just gotten... You know, when I, I did a haul on getting that with the Joy Church right here, this one, and I just showed you, I love it. And look what I found for $1.50, this tin, gorgeous church house. I love it. I just love it. I love back in the day when they homeschooled their, they had their church house schools. I homeschooled all my sons. And I just love this. And look at, you put tea lights in the back. You just lift that up and your little tea lights set back there. And it lights up. Now is that not more beautiful? 
I just think it's absolutely gorgeous and it matches this card to a T. So, T lights matches to a T. <laughs> Anywho, okay, so then I grabbed some of these at the dollar store, these little micro beads in the little bottles because I may use those, I have not decided. And I just got out a whole bunch of glitter because I'm not sure what I'm going to use there, but I did want to show you this. Get yourself some of these post-it notes. Uh, they're the full sheet post-its, 8.5 by 11. Right here you get 25 of them and you can stamp out anything and use it as a mask. And that's what I did right here on the, on the church house. I stamped it out, cut it out. I'm going to use glitter so it looks like stained glass windows. I cut every window out fussy cut around here to cover this for when I use my backdrop of trees. Then, I didn't stop there, I wanted this roof to have um, bricks. I wanted it to be bricked on the top of the roof. I know roofs don't have brick, but I wanted that uh, textured effect. And so I just took, um, oh here they are. That was from the dollar store. All different patterns, really pretty. And, um, okay, so then I took uh, Tim Holtz Brick uh, Alterations uh, embossing folder and I ran it through my um, Vagabond. And then I just cut out a little piece from the Strathmore paper. I went on here, I'm going to save this, and I grabbed the bricks I wanted to use. Then I cut it out and I glued it down to the top of the church and that's going to give me a little bit of dimension. Okay, so let's get on it because we are going to watercolor and we are going to use my applique. I found them. So we're going to use this snow applique and I have this. I made this bow with the gold because I want it to match in here but I don't know where I'm going to put it yet. Possibly there. That's where the gold came into play on these. And um, where I got that was just from a gold and burgundy rope that I had here, ribbon rope. And I just untwined the end and made myself a little gold and burgundy matches beautifully. So I realize, you know, when I do cards that uh, it's more than one product, okay? so. Not all of us have every product, but yet when I go on YouTube and I look up people's videos, I don't look to see what products they have. I looked at what they're doing, if I like what they're doing, how they're doing it, and then I incorporate what I have because we all have different things. And um, so this is kind of a mishmash of everything that I have, you know, rope. Is everybody going to have this rope? No. But it gives you an idea to just take what you have and incorporate it into your card. I don't know where, but I did that earlier. So let's get going here. So I thought that was kind of pretty. I'm going to put this to match this tree in the gold I want. And it's going to be 3D mounted right there. These are just at their Studio G at Michael's. I got five for a dollar. They were on sale. And they're three-dimensional stickers. Okay, so let's get going here. Um, I can't think of anything else. This is going to go here. I am going to use the black corners on this to pop it out. And let's get started on the painting. All right. So first of all, I want to... Let me see what I'm going to do here. I'm going to do all my stamping first before I start the painting. So I want to have my lovely as a tree um, right here. So let's get this on. Um, there we are. I was doing a Christmas card, so I put my Christmas sweater on. A red one. <laughs> I didn't plan it. I just got red on today. Nice cashmere because it's kind of cool today. And I thought the cashmere would be really nice and keep you warm. Okay, so that's all you have to do with these. They're just like post-it notes. 
There you go. And then I'll save that to put it back on to put it in my stamp. And let's get this on here. Now the one thing with this, you, oh, wait a second, I just noticed something. I did not get all the way around to this. Yikes, I missed a section. See, this is what uses up my time. I am going to have to go on and find out how I can get more than 29 minutes. I know there's a way. I will find it because I don't know if I get 20. My camera just shuts off at 29 minutes. It has nothing to do with YouTube. My camera shuts off. Craziness. I'm going to have to lengthen my camera, I guess. Okay, so I'm going to stand up here so that I can move in so you can see me coloring right there. And let's get this on. Uh, so whatever image you have, it's just important you get it, um, you know, fairly close. Obviously, we're not going to get everything like right on because when you use um, um, Versamark in that, it spreads a tad, right? And then you're putting... Um, I did the Versamark first with the clear embossing powder, then I did the stays on after that. So, anyway, so now I am going to do the Versamark on this tree in the background. I'm not sure if I'm going to put the black stays on. I will see. This is going to go. Hmm. Right like that. There we are. And I'm trying to think if I should do, you know what? I'm going to do it in the black embossing powder. I wonder if I, you know what? I don't know if this is embossing powder though. Yikes. I better stick to what I know. Um, is embossing powder. I'm not sure about that glitter, but that sure would look nice. I have to get a nice case for all of my embossing powders because I have so many of them. Um, and that would be nice. Okay. I'm looking all around to see if I have to get up again to get my coffee filters. Ugh. I tell you, I have been working on this card in and out. I think that's what I'm going to do. Yes. I will just emboss it with black. There we are. Oh, that looks nice. And I did not use my... My static again. And I put it out. That's crazy. It's one thing not to use it because you don't have it around you. But when you took it out to use it, that's crazy. Okay. All right. Sorry. Okay. Let's put that down. Let's get our embossing out. This is using up my time because I got a color. I only have 15 minutes left. Not good. You almost have to do your card with only half an hour. And uh, I don't want to do that. I have to extend my time out. Okay. I'm going to do this. At the same time, I'm going to do this. Two things done at a time. the other trees as well, so I have to leave this uh, post-it note on there. This will be nice. And you'll have to make sure that it's... Okay. Go. I'm going to 
trouble shutting that off. All right, and so now we have that, and then my lovely as a tree. Um, this one I am going to do in stays on, but I am going to do it in the stays on gray, the dead gray, just for the background. Oh. I don't think I'll get much on there if I have the plastic on it, do you? Okay. There we are. And this is going just in the background. So how I am going to do this is this way. Excuse me, but I'm gonna put this away. All right, I have to decide how this is going to be. All right. Hmm. That looks good there. I'm gonna leave that on because I am going to watercolor around there. I think I will use my powder. Just really quick and then we'll start watercoloring and placing that on. There we go. Oh, that's pretty. And that looks good. Really good. All right, let's get this on here. Clear, and I'll quickly emboss that, and we can get to watercoloring. Watercoloring doesn't take that long. It kind of darkens it, and then I'll put some in the background. It look really pretty. And this is just giving you an idea, you know, to do your own cards. Just what you can do with it. I didn't see this one on YouTube. This one came out of my old noggin myself. Okay. We go. Let's put this away. And I need about a 40 foot by 40 foot desk. I do. This is crazy. I spend a lot of my time cleaning up after, as we all do. Okay. Then I'm going to take the lovely as a tree, reposition it differently for trees in the background, like that. Just pick it up. Oh, new. Wait a minute. That doesn't look good. Let me redo this. I guess there wasn't enough of the ink on there. Okay, I can do that again. No worries. There's not enough on there to worry about it though. Right there. I don't know if it's my desk, but I better press it just a bit there. Oh, I love that. Love it. I'm not going to do any more. I'm going to let that dry. And that looks beauteous. Let's take this off. Here. Um, where's my pokey tool? Right in front. Oh, before I do that, I am going to do the stained glass. No, I can put that back on for the stained glass. Isn't that pretty? Let me show you this. There you have it. That is beautiful with the dark. I love that. Okay, then I am going to put this one little post-it note up here. For when I'm watercoloring, I want there to be a little bit of the sun showing through right there on the, on the church house, like that. So I don't want to get the blue in the way. And let's get coloring quickly. 
Please, I don't want to go into another part. I think this time is just too fast. Can I say that enough times? Okay, let's go. I am going to start with two blues. I am going to have weathered wood and broken china. And let's get going here. And I just took it, put it on the block. And I'm going to do one of my thicker water pens. I'll use a thin one for the church, but for this guy, this will work out. Get yourself, I want to see if you can see me on here. I don't want you to see the napkin and not what I'm doing. that would help. There we are. I, wa I don't want, um, I want to do some of the trees in there. I'll darken that up after. Okay. And it's just to look like a watercolored pick. It's not too I'm just bringing both of them together. I'm just going to dot this because I'm going to add some green in here on the tree. I will dot the blue behind it like this. Beauteous. Okay, I want to darken that just a little bit. So I will take a little bit of the faded jeans. Like that. Bring it into this color. Is pretty. Darken the top up. That looks good, doesn't it? That's the beauty of watercoloring. Grab some more for the top. There. Okay, we've got the green down. Then I am going to get a little bit of green for the trees and I'm telling you if my time I'm going into a part two because this is too pretty of a image to stop and then I'm going to that was forest moss and then I'm going to put some whatever this green is I don't even see it on there Oh, pine needles. <laughs> well, that's a real different contrast, but that's good. Okay, and then I'll take, uh, I'm going to take my more detailed. Um, this is Tim Holtz detailed pen, and it is really detailed. And let's grab some water. There we go. And start going into the trees. I do not want it really watery. There we go. And if you find it's got too much, just take your
And because of the Versa mark on there, it's only going to allow you so much anyway to dry in there. It sure is pretty though. Wow. I love the way the Versa mark just keeps it in to the actual lines. over colors on this tree because trees are not always the same color. Water blending it out. Love it. Pick it up if you don't like it with your napkin. There we are. Love that. I'm just going to let it draw. I'm sorry, I'm not talking here with this. I am going to let it just um, dry to its. Let the paper just take it in. There we are. Okay, and then I'm going to add glue because I want sparkle like that snow back there. I don't mind um, a tad bit of green maybe peeking out, but I don't want a lot because it is not, uh, you know, if you're going to have snow, you're not seeing green, right? Even on here, I'm going to add some brown. So let's grab some of the uh, walnut stain. I'll put some of that on there. Let me see my time. One minute. Oh my. There is no way I am going to finish this in one minute. So I am going to have to make it a two-parter. I'm sorry. But uh, I want to add some browns into the trees because it's winter. Just kind of, and I thank you for joining me. I'll see you on part two. I just want this to look really good. I don't want to rush it. Here's what I have so far on there and I am running out of time. I will finish this uh, in part two. Okay, have a blessed evening.